Hi everyone, it's Mitch from SportsChatPlace.com and it's Thursday, January 13, 2011. Here with your free NFL football pick. And of course, this is, this is going to be for uh, Saturday, uh, January 15, 2011. We've got four NFL playoff games. I'm going to do one, on, one today and then I'll do the early game on Sunday uh, tomorrow, the Bears-Seahawks. Then uh, on Saturday, I'll do the uh, Falcons against the Packers, and Sunday, Jets-Patriots. So uh, we're going to cover all four NFL playoff games. Now, of course, uh, yesterday in SportsChatPlace.com Premium Edition, we, got, we hit the cover off the ball. We hit seven out of eight of the premium picks that were posted in there. I was 2-1. and one. Everybody else, perfect record. Um, I, I gave Syracuse and... Uh, Michigan were, were, two, were my two winners. I lost uh, another one. And it was just a play that I had given in the free section that I said I felt was a strong play. I'm not sure what the heck I was thinking there, but uh, we know what Kyle was thinking. Boy, putting the puck in the back of the net there with his hockey pick. Normally we only hear from Kyle on Saturday when it's hockey night in Canada with his premium picks. Of course, his, his free picks have been outstanding, just like they, they always are you know, for, uh, for the last uh, couple of years. But uh, he, he gave a premium pick yesterday. Three, one by three goals, uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. So uh, w w way to light the lamp, Kyle. But uh, anyways, uh, Dan had a, had a surefire winner. He said he absolutely was in love with the pick and uh, what was not to love about, uh, about Villanova yesterday against Louisville. So uh, Craig Trapp went against my uh, Pittsburgh video pick. Said take Pittsburgh money line in, in, in that thing. And uh, they certainly uh, delivered. Uh, Craig, I think, hit all four of his, uh, his picks that he was selling over at picks and parlays.net. So, uh, you know, if you're ever interested in just picking up a premium pick uh, here and there, go over to picksandparlays.net. We got a bunch of cappers over there selling individual picks. And, of course, if you don't want to buy my premium uh, subscription to uh, the premium site, I, s I have individual game picks for, there, for sale there as well. But they're the, uh, they're the same picks that I list in the uh, premium section at sportschatplace.com. Premium edition. So uh, seven out of eight yesterday. If you are a subscriber, you played our picks. Your uh, subscription is more than paid for for several years to come. I think at thirty nine ninety nine, there's no better deal on the entire uh, entire anywhere. Um, it's a little. It's about the price of a, of a newspaper. And it, I'm telling you, we only uh, we we promise that we'll give you at least one premium pick each and every day um, over the course of the month. I think on most days we go way above and beyond. Like yesterday was a Wednesday, eight picks. Um, I think it comes out to like 20 cents a pick or something, you know, where most places are charging 25, 30 and, and upwards for, for a pick. So uh, be sure to check it out. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely worth your while. But, uh, you know, let's, let's uh, you know, we have tons of picks at sportschatplace.com on the free site as well. We had 34 picks yesterday on the free site as well. So uh, be sure to check out sportschatplace.com. We have everything going on there. We got two new tennis writers. We have, you know, college hoops. We covered just almost the, the full slate. There's 145 college basketball games on uh, Saturday. So if you're not a member of SportsChatPlace.com Premium and you're, you know, you're kind of wavering because football season is over, don't worry. We got plenty of games with 145 college basketball games, with NBA going, hockey going. You know, before you know it, baseball will be here. We always have tons of write-ups, tons of picks in uh, Sports Shop Place Premium. And I'm going to imagine with it being basketball season, we're going to have more than ever because there's so many more games. But uh, anyways, let's get to our – and, of course, I'll have my NFL picks. Uh, I'll have NFL picks on each game in the premium section as well. But I also got a free NFL pick uh, for each game as well. And uh, let's start it off with the first game of the playoffs, and that's the Ravens and the Steelers. Really looking forward to this one. I think this one is going to be a classic. Why is it going to be a classic? Both teams have good offenses. Both teams have outstanding defenses. Let's look at the offenses for a second. Joe Flacco, I really never gave this guy a lot of credit or any credit at all for, uh, for, the, for you know, since he's come into the NFL. I thought he was overrated. I thought it wasn't a great move for the Ravens to trade up to get him. And, uh, you know, he's starting to prove me wrong. He's playing well, and he's making uh, – good throws and smart decisions. He's never going to be a Peyton Manning. He's never even going to be an Aaron Rodgers, and he's never going to be a uh, Tom Brady. But you know what? Those guys don't come around all that often. And if you could be a serviceable NFL quarterback for a very long time, well, you know, th there's a lot to be said about that. And uh, there's plenty of Hall of Famers that have those same credentials. So uh, I'm not saying Flacco's a Hall of Famer. I'm just saying he's a lot better than I thought he was. And maybe it was the addition of Anquan Bolden that kind of freed up the entire passing game. But the way he hit Heap last week, 
boy, that really showed something and a lot of maturity showing that, you know, he just was going for the open guy. And uh, that's really what it's all about. Joe Montana showed us you could have a pretty good career doing it that way and have a lot of success. Um, of course, he's got a lot of help in the backfield. Ray Rice and Willis McGahee, a two-headed monster. Rice, of course, now the feature back. McGahee grinding out the top yards, but both these guys contributing. McGahee kind of putting away last week's victory. And uh, these guys, they support each other. And it's not like, uh, you know, it's a, if anything, it's a friendly competition. So uh, that's always a real positive attitude, you know, and a real positive atmosphere for the team. On the other side of the ball, Ben Roethlisberger really inventing, reinventing the Pittsburgh offense, always seen as a grinded out running team. And yes, they have a grinded out running game with Richard Mendenhall, who has gotten stronger as the season's gotten on, stronger as his career has gone on. But with Wallace and, and Ward also, and also using you know, some, of the, some of the other guys as well, um, you know, Roethlisberger's really turned this into a team that can air it out. And uh, while Heinz Ward has you know, done it in the past, and of course, Antonio Holmes, it's kind of funny that, you know, Two, two times the Steelers recently have won Super Bowls, two times uh, wide receivers were the, were the MVPs. You know, Ward is kind of the secondary receiver now with Wallace, uh, you know, getting, getting the bulk of the action. But uh, if your second wide receiver is Heinz Ward, you're in pretty good shape as far as uh, wide receivers. And, of course, Heath Miller, a great tight end. But when we look at this game, we got to look at the defenses. Ray Lewis is the heart and soul of the Ravens. He's the heart and soul of the Ravens defense and one of the best players to ever play the game of football. You got to remember the last time the Ravens won the Super Bowl. They did it when, in a year where they didn't score a touchdown for several weeks in a row. It was all Ray Lewis back then and this year it's been all Ray Lewis once again. One of the leading tacklers in the, in the NFL and of course, you know, really putting up the numbers this year. Of course, Ed Reed only really played about half a season this year. Still one of the top interceptors in the entire NFL. Hard to believe that he only played half a year, but if you remember back, he, he wasn't playing much this season. And uh, boy, he's had a season's worth of, of, of uh, production, though, for uh, just about any other player out there. Of course, with Suggs, Nata, and uh, a guy that we liked in college, a guy we liked coming out, and we called him one of the better nose tackles in the game. Of course, we liked Sue, you know, out of college, you know, long before he became the in vogue guy. Uh, but we, also, we always loved Mount Cody, um, and uh, Cody is really starting to deliver, forcing the fumble last week, and you could see why we always liked him, and I, why I thought he was the difference maker over at Alabama in those, uh, you know, which, which really brought them back to prominence, uh, you know, how, well, I mean, that's a, whole, that's a whole other discussion for another time, and I believe one time I even talked about how the, how the, how the presence of a 350 pound nose tackle just affects the entire game and why so many teams have had success doing it that way and if you look back at all the you know championship teams the patriots with vince wolfark in the middle it, 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 guys like that just occupy so many blockers especially when they have the quickness but like i said different story different day let's go over to the pittsburgh side of the ball and some of the best linebackers we said it before the season started i looked at those linebackers on paper and i said this might be the best unit of linebackers in the history of football and i still believe that they might be i think but what i also think is that this unit even goes beyond the starters and uh, it's, even the depth is some of the best linebackers in history as a unit. You know, really tremendous uh, production out of this unit. It is awfully tough sledding against that Steelers uh, defense. Of course, once you get past those linebackers, you know, with Harrison and, and Woodley and, uh, you know, Farrier and, and you know, you got Troy Palomalu waiting for you on the, uh, waiting for you behind them. This guy is just simply a playmaker. Hard to believe he only has two touchdowns in his career, but... You know, it's mostly because we're so used to him making these spectacular plays, but a lot of those spectacular plays are interceptions in the end zone. A lot of them are like just these tackles where he comes out of nowhere, knocks the ball loose. This guy is always around the football, kind of like Ray Lewis. When you're always around the football, you can make things happen. You can make plays happen. <laughs> you know, because, you know, obviously when you're in defense, the idea is to tackle, you know, and defend the other guys carrying the football. That's what these guys do, and that, you know, it's, it really is that simple. But anyways, when it comes to this game, I think defense rules the day in this thing, and I think this thing goes under. 37 points is a low number for an NFL football game, especially one that's going to be loaded with commercials like this one probably will be. But I think 37, I think it's going under. I also think that this game finishes way early, and they're going to have a lot of filler time because uh, these, two, these two teams are going to try and ground it out and play a little smash mouth with one another. 
with one another. They certainly don't like each other. But uh, our play, our free play, the under, I'll have, a, I'll have a premium pick on this game in the uh, premium section as well. So this is Mitch from SportsChatPlays.com. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to uh, check out all of our free sports picks, write-ups in action at SportsChatPlays.com. Be sure to check out my best bets or staff's best bets and picks from some of the top handicappers in the world, all at SportsChatPlays.com Premium Edition. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with the Bears-Seahawks pick. Have a great day.